welcome back to my channel it's Angela again here today thank you for joining me now I do want to welcome everybody all my lovely new subscribers a very warm welcome to you all and of course my long-standing lovely uh, subscribers that I've had for a while thank you so much for all your encouragement and support I'm really most grateful and I can never thank you enough so I do appreciate you taking the time to watch what I do week on week thank you now I do need to apologize to some people because I have promised that I would finish off um, the last couple of episodes on how to uh, make your own journal and I got up to I think episode seven so I've got another two to do and then maybe a flip through at the end and what I want to do today is show you how to make um, a pocket for the inside of your cover so it's quite a quick project won't take very long um, and as you remember we're working on this journal which is um, near ready to be um, sewn into the, si the signature to be sewn in but what I wanted to do quickly is just show you how to go about making a, a really effective uh, and not f too complicated little um, element to go onto the cover of your journal so I hope you're going to follow along um, it isn't very hard um, and I, I'm sure that you all have these things available to make something almost exactly the same I'm going to be using Edith Holden um, paper for the little tag I'm going to make and I'm not going to show it to you before um, and then I'm going to show you how I use one of my little templates which is um, really cute to make a little pocket for that to go in as well in the front so and the reason I'm using Edith Holden for the tag is because this is an Edith Holden page the very first page here and I like to sort of marry up things um, one of my subscribers asked me the other day how do I go about choosing um, various colors and papers for what I'm doing well I just if you go and look at my probably the very first episode where I'll show you how I gather things together that's how I go about um, deciding on what I'm going to use now I like to sort of have things matching up so for example in the front here there's the common theme of nature you've also got the common theme of um, blues and greens and neutrals so and that's the way I sort of do it those things all need to match up in my head so that could be um, lots of different things i mean we've got wallpaper here old book pages i've got scrapbook paper i've got um, digital paper i've got parchment paper but they've all got a commonality of blues um, nature and that kind of thing so if that gives you an idea of what i'm sort of talking about go and have a look at the very first episode i think where i'll tell you how i gather things together for that all right so let's get started with what we're going to put on over here um, what I want to do is, first of all, I usually measure and think to myself, right, I, I like a little bit of space on either side here. Um, and in this case, I wouldn't want something more than 10 centimeters maximum, which in inches, that's four inches. All right. So and you, you don't want to take it right to the top. I like to just still see this paper going around the sides here. All right. So that's the sort of idea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little envelope, but into a pocket. Um, I've got one of the templates that I use um, with the templates that I made. Um, and today I'm going to use this little one here, which is, um, I call it my mini CD envelope, but it's envelope three on the templates. And that's the size that we're going to use because when I fold that up, uh, we've got to fold in the flaps. That's the perfect size for what I want to do today. So there we go. If I measure this for you, I can tell you it is eight and a half by eight and a half. Um, and then the flaps on all sides. But if you want a template, you can have a look at the link below and I'll leave that for the, env the envelope template. And that's available in my shop. So you can go and have a look at that. It's got a number. Of, I think I've got three different envelopes and of course a long tag pocket and a long tag to help you as well. All right, so let's get moving on. Um, I'm going to just put this to the side quickly. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our template. I'm just grabbing a piece of scrapbook paper that matches with that inside of my 
journal. Um, this is just printed on one side, so I've decided I'm going to use that. And all you need to do here is, is just um, place it on your paper. And this is why I love templates, because it just makes it pretty easy. Take your pencil and just very gently, or carefully, should I say, um, just run that around the edge of your template which makes it really easy. You don't need to um, do much. Now, um, just an idea for you, and I have templates for lots of things. Use either um, a recycled board, like something from a cereal box that's a good thickness, um, or you could even use thick acetate. So if you had to cut it out of this kind of stuff, um, from packaging or that you have on hand you get them in a4 sheets you can then also see the pattern if you're wanting a specific piece when you want to um, use some decorative paper you might want to have a specific piece of that pattern so for example i'm just seeing what i've got on my desk if i was wanting to get the those images in the middle I could then place my template on there that see through and then get that position correctly as opposed to trying to guess when that's a whole piece of paper that you've actually centralized it. So that's just another tip. All right, so we're not using the birds, we're using this. So all we need to do now is take your scissors and cut all around there, which I have done to save you the boredom of watching that. So there we go, I've cut that out. How quick was that? Um, and that's what we're going to use as the base for our little insert. So I'm going to just take my new bone folder because <laughs> I couldn't live without it. And what I'm going to do is just take my ruler, match up the point over there with the point over there uh, like that. And I'm just going to run my bone folder over that like that don't need to do it over there I need to do it over here so again match that point up there with that point over there and just run your ruler like that okay so that's all you need to do here now what we would like to do is look where you have um, got your score line and then just fold that over like that okay and then on this side bend over this bit here to your score line which is there but before I press it down I just like to um, check that I have actually matched that up evenly there so I have done but I you know it's just me being overly cautious so there we go and then yeah that looks pretty good pretty good and then what I, like, I do is I just use those little edges there as the guides to fold this over in this case. I don't normally fold these over. I usually fold them under. But in this case today, you don't want your tag to catch on the flap. So you're not going to see them. It's going to be stuck down. So we are going to fold them over. All these little things that you live and learn by. All right, so yeah, that's what we're going to do today, just like that. If I was going to use this as a CD case, I would put those underneath like that because you don't want to see that if this was not being attached. But in this case, we're not. So we're going to do that. Now, you're not going to see that either. What we're going to do straight away is take our glue and this flap here at the top, we just want to um, glue that down so just run some glue over there and glue that down there we go right. just like that and then 
we're not going to glue anything else that now um, I didn't cut it off because because this is um, going to be a pocket and that's the top it's actually now reinforced the edge of that pocket really nicely so from taking it something in and out and moving you don't just have a thin piece of paper you've got a nice robust edge now that's gonna um, really last a lot longer so that's what I do there all right now what we're going to do now is um, I'm trying not to use fancy tools today again I want to make a window here because we're going to put a tag in that's going to have a lovely lovely visual on display so again I'm going to just take uh, my distress inks lid and I'm going to just look where I want to position that so pretty much um, slightly higher this way than that way but centralize it uh, that way <laughs> excuse the fingers all right so we've got that pretty much where we want it hold that in place take your pencil um, and just run that around like that all right and that's the perfect size for this little envelope just like that all right, so now what I do is invest in one of these ladies, if you don't have one. I was listening to, um, was it Barbara, 49 Dragonflies? She was talking about effect toe knives, I think, and uh, Stanley knives. Barbara, this is a Stanley knife. It's a brand. And there's other ones with just the one blade. Those are craft knives. So, yeah, but... You don't have to have a Stanley brand, just these are really reasonably priced and much cheaper than using your trimmer. And you can use these for a lot of other things that you can't use your trimmer for, so like this. So, and you can to buy blades for this is so reasonable, you can't go wrong with this. All right, as long as you're careful, right now, this is where being careful comes into play. I'm just going to run this slowly around the corner i only have to do this around one corner there you have it and we're going to just lift that up like that and we've loosened that because i like to be able to use this piece in the middle if you don't want to do that what you could do is just make a cross in the middle with a knife or, or just um use your scissors and make a hole in the middle um and then you could actually just use your scissors and cut around. If you had to take something like your circle punch, if you don't have a knife, just go like that and punch a hole in the middle. You'd have a place to put your scissors to get to the edge and go around. So that's another idea if you're not, if you don't have one of these. Now that I've loosened one of the corners, now it's pretty easy, and I can carefully just go around these here. There we go. And you see, you don't need to have an, a die cut to do that. And there you go. You, this is perfectly intact. You can use that to make a little card uh, for something else. So, right. I've just discovered my tea dye uh, flavour. <laughs> Colour in the drawer. And I'm quite liking it at the minute. So, um, I'm just going to gently do some tea staining over there on the inside bits like that there we go all right and then just close that up quickly, just um, not that we're going to glue it, but just so that you can see where you need to do the other edges if you want to um, distress the edges, that is. Okay, so I'm doing that ever so lightly. I'm trying to make the, the corners a little bit um, darker. There we go. All right, so we've done all of that. Now we're going to open it up again and we just want to put some acetate over there. That's going to help reinforce that as well. So I've, that's not the right piece of acetate. It's somewhere on my desk. 
Uh, yeah, I used it earlier, right. So um, I've got a piece of acetate that I've found. Um, it's a bit skew over there, but it doesn't matter. All right, so we just want to make sure this is going to fit in here before I decide to glue that down. And I think I need to just take a little piece of that side because this doesn't bend very easily. Okay, just make sure that all the sides are going to bend before you put the glue on. And then what we'll do is we'll just put some glue on there. So first things first is we want to run some glue uh, around the edge. Now, I say this all the time, don't go too close to the edge. It's going to ooze out onto the acetate and leave a horrible mark. And then just take the glue and run it along the edge here. Because when you put in your tag, you don't want the tag to catch on an, an unglued acetate edge. All right, so grab it in the middle. I think it was this way. <laughs> and then just place that down, all right? And then just run your finger down that, like that. Okay, let me just let that dry for a minute. Okay, I would leave that to dry for a bit, um, but I'll just talk you through the next thing quickly. Right, now you can or you can't, this is up to you. Um, you can stitch around there. I like a bit of messy stitching. I think it just gives it a bit of a design element, but it's not required and I say that all the time. So you don't have to because you've glued it well enough, it's gonna stay in place. Um, so that's what I my comment on that. If you feel like you wanna have a go at it, then please do. All right, so what we're ready to do now, um, if you're going to sew that, go and do that. I've got one here that I haven't sewn, and then I have actually done some messy stitching, um, and it's messy for a reason, because it's not easy to do this on acetate, um, but there you go, and I quite like how that looks. So there you go, you've got one of each there really, and if I lift those up, you can see whatever it is that you prefer. That looks much neater. All right, so, that's what we're going to do and use for the pocket. So it's not very difficult at all. So if I finish off with this one, you're going to now fold that in. And what you can do, if you like, and we, let's do that, is actually put a, a piece stuck on there, not right to the edges, um, just so that you don't have that white shining through. That's just a personal prefer preference of my own. So, um, you can or you, you don't have to do that. So what I will do is just grab a piece of paper. I just want to see if this bit is going to cover that area. And it is. And that will match with the inside of my um, inside cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take um, one of these lids again. Uh, just to give me an idea here, make it a little bit bigger. Um, and this is just as a gauge, just so that I can stick that down there. So I've made it slightly bigger, and I know that that's going to cover the opening. And I'm just going to stick that down. So I'm not worrying about anything because you're not going to see this. Um, and then I'm going to stick that in the middle there. That before, let me just check. Um, we want to just make sure that that is going to, in fact, cover the area. So that's where I need to stick it. All right. So just to make sure. Let's first put glue on here. Getting to the end of this art glitter glue. And Carol, you were right. This does last a long time. So, thank goodness I have another one. Right, so now, before I put this down, I do want to be mindful of the fact that I want to get this in place there. That looks like where it needs to be. So I'm just going to move that down a bit. And there we go. So that's easy enough. Always check beforehand. 
that's going to look better than just the white area in my mind. You are going to have a tag in there, but I don't like to see the white when I pull the tag out. So that's a choice that you can make. All right, so this is the top. That's where we reinforce that flap. And that's the way the side flaps are going to tell you where the sides are. So now you're ready to stick those side flaps down. So let's do that quickly. Don't go right to the top here because uh, the back flap doesn't go right to the top. You'll stick it to your um, the area you don't want to stick it to. So just be mindful of that the, the, as high as you should go with the glue. There we go. Oops. <laughs> right. It's a very muggy day here today. It's very windy, so the washing's out. So I hope it is going to dry. Let's just make sure I haven't glued where I shouldn't have. And I haven't, so that's good. And we can just... See, I even distressed the flaps. Not needed. <laughs> okay. Right, so there's our little pocket with our little window all ready to go in our bog. So we're going to just um, do one little thing on here. And there's a number of things you can do on here. You can put some um, lace on there. You can do all sorts. I have got this little container here, um, minus the, where I have all the little bits and pieces, except for these. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know how. See, all the things that you don't want in here end up in here. But these are all the little bits and pieces of the tiniest scraps that are, I mean, even this size are all in here. And I use them. So, you know, this kind of thing is right up my alley for what I'm going to show you now. All right. So we've got our little tub here. See, I've even got the end of a little piece of um, lace. So that we could use as well. So we'll keep that out. And then what I do is I like to make um, these little clusters. So I'm going to show you how I do that so you can make some for yourself because I think that would look really pretty on there. Maybe we want a little piece of lace um, to stick out as well. Maybe, you know, so um, that's all up to you. So that's what I'm going to show you how to make very quickly, which is really easy. And this is where keeping all the, the little scraps and bits and pieces you chop off, put them in a container like that. I have got all sorts going on in here, as I said, all sorts. Uh, and I just throw them in that little tub on my desk um, as I'm going. All right. So what you need is I usually have some doily bits. Um, here's one that I've chopped off. Um, I'm going to use that as a base and then what I do then is I take out some of these bits so here I've got a tiny piece of tulle um, and I'm going to stick that on um, then I have got a tiny little snippet I've cut off a piece of uh, seam binding and I'm going to stick that on like that All right let's just get the glasses on because I'm not that's better I'm in HD now uh, I can see everything and here's another little scrap I've put on uh, in that little thing and I'm going to put that on um, I've I've got sorry fibers going on here I'm putting those on and then I've just taken a piece of um, muslin from this kind of thing here and I'll show you how I do that um, I just, I like to um, sort of dissect it a bit. So I pull some of these fibers out, chop it off, um, and then I sort of just loosen them up, pull them apart like that. And I especially love the sari fibers that I cut off when you are you know when you're ironing the sari and you have all these funny fuzzy little bits like um this kind of thing let me grab it here this kind of thing from the sari i love those but i don't have any that i oh maybe i do no i don't i don't have any that are going to match with what i'm doing so i'm using some of this and i'm just bunching it up again making it into like a little nest of fibers 
and I'm gonna hold that down and plunk that on the top there like that there we go just arrange them a little bit right not much arranging but there we go so we've got a little stack of goodies that we've put down there and then I just go and grab one of my little buttons so here I've got a tiny little button um, and I'm going to put that on the top there so it looks like a little open sandwich of fibers and bits and really it's a bunch of scraps that I've thrown into that container um, so and then hold your button in the middle and I mean you all know how to sew so I'm sure and then I just get that there hold on to the back tail bit otherwise it'll be so pulled up into your button and I often forget that right so now I'm just trying to find the other side there we go and I just do um, two stitches on each side so it's easy as that really okay there we go right so then turn it over make a knot with the tail bit and at the back there just to keep it in place and then grab your scissors and just chop that off okay so you don't need that anymore and now you can see you've got a lovely cluster I might need a bit of tidying up a little bit there we go and look at that how cute is that yeah so that's how i make my little clusters from all those little bits and all the sorry bits the sh sewing threads um anything i have in fact <laughs> don't laugh when i show you in fact i have a container here where i keep all my threads from the sewing machine and um i use those in the same way all right so yeah you can use everything so that's what we're going to do. Here's our little pocket. Let's see now if this is a bit of lace that I'm not quite happy with that end there. But maybe. Um, maybe I can just chop that a bit further at an angle. Or something. Something like that. Just to see yeah and then i'm going to just chop that end off as well like that now this is some of that washy um lace stuff i'm gonna just put that on the corner there all right and then i'm going to just get some of my fabric tack um and take the end off because I haven't been using it as much as I normally do and then uh, just put some a liberal amount of glue on the back of that like that and let's get this lid on because it likes to erupt and then we can just decide uh, let's think I think that's gonna work and then I'm going to just stick that down on the top there. All right, so we'll keep that one for there, just like that. All right, and you can put a little word on there. Um, I did have one. What did I do with it? I had a little word on my desk somewhere. Somewhere. It's gone. But we can just get another one. So... If I look at some of the words, and I mean, you can choose anything you have, and you know I like to um, stamp my own like this. So um, just grab one of these. Uh, get my daughter to do this for me. You know, just take one of those like that. 
um, just ink the edges and you can always just stick that on there as well and that would look really pretty if you tuck it in so let's just get one of these little syringe glues that don't put on a lot and then we can just go like that and it's just a case of placing it in the right spot really okay there we go how's that that's adorable i think okay so we're ready to go with the pocket um, i'm going to put that to the side quickly and then i'm going to just talk you through how i make a tag so um this is going to be using your edith holden pages so what you first want to do is is work out the width now i wouldn't want to go beyond eight centimeters here um, if I do that in inches, I think that's just over three. So we're looking at about, yeah, three and a quarter. I wouldn't go over that. So that's what I do. And then I work out the length again with a ruler. So, um, yeah, what I've done here is cut out a piece of card from packaging. And this is 14 centimeters. So that's uh, four five and a half centimeters long it can be whatever length but just make it a comfortable width that you know is going to fit comfortably in there so if I have to slide this in here you're not going to have any kind of problem with that right so there we go this is five and a half by um what did I say uh three and a quarter so that's absolutely the size all right so that's what I've done there then what I did was um I took this page here, <laughs> this was my April um, page I had from Edith Holden um, and I thought right I quite like that image there and I thought I could also use that one for another one as well and I've cut that out and I've covered that card just with my um, Uhu glue stick and that's because um, I'm going to stitch around there ultimately which you don't need to do either all right so that's what I've done there and then on the other side of that page I just tore out um, a few of the words that I'm going to use on there as well so that's what I've done with that piece um, and then what I've done is I have just fussy cut out a couple of um, flowers from one of my books um, so nothing spectacular this is just a bit of greenery and this is just something with a few of the mauves um, to pick up there and also um, on the inside of this signature we've got a lot of mauves so i thought it would work well to have an edith holden tag in on this side of the book all right so that's what i've done so what i'm going to do now is we've got some nice space on that side so i thought i would just add to the meadow look here and put these two over here so that's what I'm going to do there just stick those down and then because we, we're making a little window here remember and I've used this one that's open um, this is what we are going to see so the bottom half is really what you're going to see and I wanted some kind of a focal point there so I just found this butterfly in one of my books um, and I thought will those bring in the colors that I have here and I thought if I stuck that down there and I put it like that, that's a beautiful window for us to look at when you open up your journal. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to use stick it just as it is like that. And then uh, somewhere I have now, oh, here we go, on my leg. Here's the little um, bits and pieces of the words that I thought I could just put at the bottom as well. Right, so it's as simple as that. Just be very mindful of where you want the focus to be. So, um, and then just put some things together that um, work with the rest of your layout and pages. So that's why this is easy enough to do. And all we're going to do now is we're going to, I think I had this one down first and that one on top. So we're going to stick those down. 
often you have um, these flowers in your books when you're fussy cutting that aren't the prettiest but they're great to use like this one here it's not very pretty um, they're great to use as like um, layering for when you're layering a couple of other things with it because not everything should be the focus you know you should have some that aren't are, are sort of blending into the background and I'll give you a tip now in a minute as soon as I finish this on um, some other ones that we might overlook that are great to use um, and they would be um, these so you know these ones that have no color um, these are great to use as well so I like to use these I cut all these black and white ones or, or the, the ones with no color because these are great they, they cover up especially book pages then you can still put some color in the front and and that will stand out more so don't think oh I can't use those these I use a lot so use those up as well cut them out all right so we've got that one down there I'm going to stick this underneath first um, let's just I mean it's got a natural lovely ivory color here or cream really it's quite dark um, but I want to put this mauve one mauve fussy cut flower which I don't know what's called and then we'll stick the mauve one on top of that so We'll put this at the bottom here, and I'm just, I like that pretty little one there, so we're not going to go over that one. There we go. And then we'll take this little pretty one too. Oh, this glue's finishing too. And I do like it for this kind of detail. So I'm going to have to refill this one too. This is just PVA in here. Right. PVA glue, that is. Right. So let's then just place that like that. Just make sure I've got it how I want it. Uh, a little bit more over. There we go. Get that all stuck down. And then lastly, um just to take away some of those white edges i like to just do this and they go which is amazing makes me look like i'm an excellent fussy cutter which i'm not okay there we go so now we're going to just grab that and just run the glue all over this butterfly's body Abby's half on her mat and half on her cushion and half on the floor heaven knows what how that's comfortable right so let's place that if I yeah it's in my window okay now normally I would be sticking a pearl or something on there but not today because it's got to go into the pocket I don't want it to, I want it all to lie as flat as possible so there we go we've got our little tag done and that's all glued down um, and what I'm going to do very quickly is and you don't need to do this is I'm going to stitch around there and I'll be back with you just in a second all right everybody so there's the edge all nicely stitched like that um all i want to do now is not that it needs it really but just going to give it a really light inking just to get rid of any of that board that might be showing through on the edges so There we go. So it's not too dark. It's really subtle, but that just takes away the white that's shining through from the card. All right, so that's really pretty. It almost looks 3D, and I quite like it. Now, um, there are many ways that people um, like to put uh, many um, options for putting in things at the top. I thought I'd just share a few with you, as this is a how-to video. 
um, for the how to make a journal. So I just want to grab one thing over here quickly. All right, so uh, you, what you can do is you can use eyelets. So eyelets is one of the options and you get them in many sizes and many colors. This is a formal, I think. And you can use your cropper dial, make a hole or your tool setting eyelet thing and use that over there. So that's an option. You can use other sorts of eyelets as well. And you've got these wide eyelets. Um, I like to use these on special projects. Same principle, use it with your um, cropper dial and it just sets a wider um, metal um, area at the top there so that's another option you don't need to use eyelets if you don't have an, a cropper dial or anything um, you also get an ice eyelet setting tool um, and let me see if I can grab it here yeah so you get an eyelet setting tool I've had this probably for 20 years um, so I don't even know it's making memories and I think um, it is great because if you don't have a cropper dial, you can do the similar kind of thing. This one makes the hole. Um, I've got a piece of uh, cardboard in there still. So you would find where you want the hole. Um, for example, um, like say if you wanted it there, you would use your hammer, tap that, um, it'll give you a hole. You put your eyelet in and you'd use that to squash the eyelet. So this is another uh, you might have one of these. So that was what I used to use for a very long time before cropper dolls came out. Right, so that is an option as well. But you don't need to have either of those things. Say, for example, you just want a hole. You could just make the hole with something like this if you have it. You don't need to have eyelets. And what I do have, which I use a lot of, is this little punch that makes the little rings. Now, you can use this or you can buy rings like you know reinforcement rings and use these are paper ones so don't get the plastic ones to do this but you're able to color your ring reinforcement um, little rings just with your dauber and you're able to change the color of those just because they're paper so there's that you can do that as well um, and this is a really economical way and I did that for a very long time so there's that option as well so let's just put that over there but what I'm going to do today is whichever way you want to use it you can also just take a, um, a piece of paper say it was like that you could just bend put that over there if that's the piece of paper you wanted to use you could just bend it round you could just make a little hole there with your punch and use that as the top of your tab so there are many options to do they're all up to you all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um i'm going to use my little punch here so let's just find a little piece of paper normally i like to use something that has um script or something on so i've got another little container here which has all my very tiny scraps in it, really tiny. <laughs> Got all sorts going on here. And here we go, here we have one that I've used before. Um, it has a lot of script on it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, punch out one of those like that. And there you have one, just like that. Um, put that back over there. Put all these little containers with different size things all over the place. I'm just going to use my ink dauber quickly. This is why I've always got um, look like I'm a heavy smoker because I've always got ink all over my fingers. And then we're just going to plonk that over here. We're going to find the center point and stick that down over there today. All right, as I said, there are many ways to do that, and probably this would have been a prettier way. Um, on there you could even use both if you wanted to I mean it's really up to you all right so let's use both maybe that would be, be better so now I like this board and which needs a wipe again um, because I'm able to work out the central point here so for me I know now that that's the center point and 
if I do that on both sides, that's what I'm going to need. Um, just like that. And then we are going to fold it in half. Was that how I wanted it? I might want it a little bit more. Just like that. So I've just folded that in half and I'm going to position that over there. All right, so let's get the glue out again. One of the glues. And we're going to put glue on both sides. Just like that. Right. And then the center point. Thank heavens for long nails. And I think that's about it. And then we can just stick that down there. So we're going to hold it quickly. I'll put this back on my. Oh, I'm going to need that. So no need to do that. So there we've got our little um, extra bits. And in hindsight, I should have put it on before I stitched around. But there you go. Um, and now, if you're wanting to, you can um, put on a little reinforcement ring, which would be just really decoration. I'm just giving you guys options. What you do is really up to you. So there we go. I'm going to just put that centrally on here, just like that. So that's really going to reinforce that little tab there. Okay. And then either use a tool setting device to make a hole. I don't want to do that. The whole place will shake. So I will go back to my cropper doll. Um, and this is a handy tool to buy. And then it's just a case of looking for the center of your... And doing that. So there we go. We've got our little hole in the middle there, just like that. All right, so that's all we're going to do with that. Now, um, let's stick this all into our book now. So let me take all these bits out of the way. Um, we have got our book here. Let's take our signature out for a minute and lay this down. And we've got everything ready for our sewing in, which will be my next video. Um, and now we've got our pocket and we want to just place that centrally. So check how high this is going to go before you decide where you want everything. All right, so that's what I would do. Look how pretty that looks in the window. It's like a little TV screen. All right, so we're going to place that. Um, I'm going to move it closer to the left than anything. And that's really pretty um, and then what I'm going to do is just so that because I'm being a pain I just want to make a little mark there if I'm going to even see this be a miracle um, and there so I know where I want it all right and now I can take that out I'm going to use um, some of my glue Um, hold it at the top because this is the side you're not gluing. Good tip. And I've gone wrong many a time. And then we can just glue the side down. Okay, just like that. Get your fingers in there here's your one mark there's the other one so we want it like that and like that and i've just gone over those marks so you can't see them now and then don't want my finger mitts on the, on the screen on the window so i'm just pressing over like that There we go. Right, so we've glued it in. Okay. Right, so our little tag can go in there now, but of course, just want to decide on a ribbon. So I think I'm going to go with something. 
don't know let's try and see so if i place that where it would be we might want to pick up a little bit of there's no blues or anything in here so we probably pick out some of the modes so let's just see what i've got as far as the modes are concerned so i'm going to be rummaging in my i've got this color And I've got a lighter one. Mm. And I've got a oh gosh, I've got all sorts in here, I really have. So we've got that. And I think that one's a bit. Hmm. So which is gonna be best? Let's see. Those are quite blue there, so and these are not so blue. So we've got, I think that one might not be quite right. I'm, I'm very mindful of the blue, so I might actually go with a, a lighter one. Is that all the colours I've got? And I'm still not happy. <laughs> Isn't that just the way? Um, yeah, okay. Be decisive, Angela. Let's go with that one. And we'll put these away. So let's just make a little bow in here. And there are lots of ways to do this as well. So I am just going to make a little bow. So I'm going to make a decent length. So let's just have a quick idea here before I cut it off. Yeah, all right, so we'll pull that down and make a knot, first of all. I do it like this. Make the knot on the on the front. Well, not really a knot, just a secure point. And then just do the little bow as you like it. And then you can chop it off like that. Okay, so we've got that going on there, and that's picking up those shades very nicely, and that will match very nicely with what's going on on the other side there. Oh, and this one just needs a little bit of glue over here. There we go. All right, so there we have the inside of our um, tag. And for being a bit, I want that just to lie flat. So there we go. All right, we've got plenty space there to um, allow that window to the tag to go in and out really nicely. Okay, so there we have it. And you could ha add other dangles on there as well. So I hope you can see that. I hope you, you like that. That is a really easy pocket and really a very pretty window to the start of your journal. Um, and it matches really nicely with that as well. And of course, when we take the tag out now, it blends in with what's behind it. So it's all sort of working together. And this bit here, it all sort of blends in. All right, ladies. So I hope that's helped you and given you some ideas for your inside covers for your journals because um, it's nice to make those as pretty as the rest of it. So what we're going to do next time, I'm going to talk you through how I would go about sewing in a signature. Um, this is just one signature, but the principle would be the same for however many signatures you are doing. And I'm going to make it simple, not hard. So this is where we are with our journal today. So thank you everybody so much for joining me. Um, I will um, be back very soon with the last um, episode of this series and then I will follow that on with a flip through. So please stay with me and I'll see you all very soon. Bye bye.